I just want to show you real quick when you are going to depart your uh, jack should be down. So here is the controls for these and inside this cabin you've got a front control and a back control and uh, you want to make sure that your wheels are chalked at this point so the trailer doesn't roll because you won't be disconnected or you won't be connected to the truck. So I'm just going to retract those, bring them all the way up. So you hear that sound and yeah, same thing with the back. You don't really need access to this panel, so at this point I'm going to move to the front. So this is the automatic jack, so you just have to extend it. At this point we haven't backed up the truck. You want to go ahead and extend the jack. It does take a little while. You just got to find adjustment, uh, but you want to get it to a point where you know you're going to be about good in your ball. Hey okay, guys, so we are sending you with this tow hitch. Uh, we've got it specifically set up for this camper. So it has the uh, anti-sway uh, system. So when you put this into your jack, it should fit in any standard truck jack. Just make sure that your pin goes through and locked into place. It's pin. So this does operate off the 12 volt system, which is totally fine to typically lift it up or down. Um, and when you're putting it under weight, I like to go ahead and connect it with a seven way port to the back of your truck. So that way that you are directly feeding the jack and you're not burning into your system. Uh, so anyways, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and drop it back down. Make sure that your pin is pulled back and we're gonna hit the opposite direction. Get your hook in and your drop latch is set, hit your pin in. And so this is gonna seem a little bit counterintuitive. Used trailers before. That's the way that the anti-sway bar system works. So we're gonna go um, go ahead and start to extend it. It's gonna lift the back of the truck, uh, but the ball's hooked. This is exactly how you're supposed to do it, so just follow this exactly. We're gonna get it, and you'll see it actually start to lift the back of the truck. So you got your um, sway bar. It's a little bit different than some. It's not a chain, so there's no left or right. They both work either side. Put it into the bottom post here. You will lift up to your hit click. Just like that, this swings over, sits right on top of this pin, do the exact same thing to the other side. Okay. And you wanna take these J pins, like this, face them little side up top, in towards the pin, and you're gonna put your pin facing backwards. If it hits with anything, it pulls out, it can kick out, so you wanna make sure that they're facing towards the trailer. If the trailer's not high enough and you're trying to put the sway bar onto this, we do have a tool that you put under here to lift up, but the easiest way to do is go ahead and extend the button a little bit further. Once you get just a tiny bit more height on it, it'll set into place. At this point, you're ready to go ahead and put the locks on. Come here, the other side. We have a breakaway, okay? So make sure that you hook that also to hasp on your truck. At that point, you are ready to go ahead and retract all the way up. Just take it down. Now we're gonna demonstrate how to unload the trailer or park and set up. So I wanna make sure that your wheels are chalked. Um, we've got wood blocks in here, we prefer to use those. We do have leveling blocks. We'll show you those in just a second. Um, right now the trailer is actually pretty level. So we're just gonna go through how to unload and get off of the uh, the anti-sway system. At this point, we're just gonna go ahead and start to extend the jack. It takes a little bit. So again, you wanna lift the truck uh, with the jack. Obviously, your anti-sway bars are still on. Once you get enough pressure off of the, the front, these bars will be able to pull off and you'll unload and you can disconnect completely from the trailer. After travel, these pins can kind of be sticky, so you may have to take a wood block and hit them from the bottom. You just want to make sure that they come undone. Pull the pin, pull the sleeve out. And I just give a light tug on this bar to see if it's going to break free. So to pull these out, just like the exact opposite, you want to move them past the 90 degree point, push straight down. They fall out. You do the exact same thing on the other side. So once you've got the sway bars disconnected, leave the pin connected, and you want to go ahead and drop back down. We're gonna take the weight completely off the jack so that it's no longer on the ground. Then we'll pull this pin, pull this back, and we can lift the trailer physically from the ball. At this point, you're still connected to your truck. This is your absolute last chance. Check and make sure that your blocks are in place and that they're good to go. Um, if they are, 
Go ahead and pull your trailer pin. Pull this sleeve straight up and back. Let it sit like that. And then you're gonna to start to extend. Still leave it connected so that way you're not using your 12 volt power to run this. You can just directly power off the truck. It's not gonna go anywhere as long as your jacks are in place. So every once in a while it might have just a little bit on there. So you might have to just step on your tailgate, raise a little bit, legs free. So go ahead and disconnect your power, disconnect your chains, and you break free. At that point, you're safe to pull away. So as I said before, we actually have this on pretty level ground, but I do want to show you guys where the side level is. It's found in the direct back on the bumper. Right here. So you'll want to make sure before you expand any of the slides or anything of that nature that this is directly in the center. Uh, like I said, we have given uh, in the front storage compartment, there's leveling blocks. Uh, what you try and do is get them level and then you would drive the trailer up onto them, either one side or the other, uh, based on how you are. Sometimes you have to back up slightly, pull up on them. The other way is to put a jack below and lift that up. I'll talk to you guys about that in person. Uh, but you want to make sure that this is absolute level on this side and then we go back to the front. So once you've got level side to side, you want to go ahead and take care of the front. So you can see here's our bubble here so I can watch it real good and easy. All right, we're good to go. So now we are gonna put out the stabilizers. So depending on where you're camping, if it's in a campground, RV spot, or if you're camping off road, <clears throat> we recommend that you use these blocks. We have two different kinds that you can buy, super easy. They're a waffle type block and they connect together like Legos. So you pull one of these out, you can connect them in all kinds of different shapes to kind of build. Uh, but we recommend that you put these below the stabilizers because if you're on any kind of dirt or gravel, you get a better connection. Uh, but for this video, I'm just going to show you guys how to run it. For the exact opposite way uh, of unloading, we're going to go ahead and extend the back first. Then we're going to do the fronts. Before we really extend those, I'm going to come back and make sure that you haven't changed your front bubble. So I didn't extend those all the way. This did raise just a slight bit. So what I want to do is drop it just a smidge more. We're good here. So now we can go ahead and extend these until they make that noise. Um, these jacks go down uh, as a unit front and back. They do not level you side to side. So it's hyper important that you put the leveling blocks from these under your tires, depending on what side needs to come up or down hyper important. Um, while we're in this this uh, cabin, I do want to look at this. If you guys are at an RV park where they have potable water source or fresh water source, this is an absolute must. This is in the handbook. Please refer to it. You have to use this connection on this city water connector. What this does is this regulates the pressure so that way that it doesn't exceed what the camper can handle. Do not connect directly from an RV frost free or a water source to this without putting this in here first. This is an absolute must. This is the fill for your freshwater tank. Do not put the RV into the freshwater tank unless you're filling it because you're empty. Um, you won't need it if you're hooked to any type of a city or an RV water source. In this trailer, we're the solar ready system. So that's gonna trickle charge back to your batteries during the day. Uh, also allows you to make the battery life last a little bit longer. As you leave with this camper, as we deliver it, this will always be set to the on position and your 12 volt power will always be set to the on position. While in use, do not disconnect these. If there's a problem with the camper electrically, please notify the host. This is the storage for your propane tanks. We have dual propane tanks and they run independent of each other and they happen or they're controlled through a selector switch. So if you reach your hand in here, there is a, a valve, it turns left or right. It's very, very simple. Vertical means that it's off. So whichever tank you're using, you point the valve to it and turn it on and you should be good to go. Um, these tanks are full at every departure. So there is no fear of this running out. 
Uh, one thing I, I like to do because it heats up uh, much faster is select the propane water heater, which is outside. It heats the tank up in about 20 minutes. The electric takes about an hour and a half. So we typically run the propane uh, for the oven, the outside cooking unit, and the water heater. 